So a therapist is specially trained to listen really actively, really intently, and to, um, to hear the patterns in the stories that are maybe not being spoken. So to ask questions to draw those stories out if it feels appropriate, although nothing is ever forced or um, imposed. And uh, I just think that if you're in the presence of someone who's really intentionally listening to you, then healing can take place. There is a space for all of people's stories here. And I welcome them and welcome all parts of every, every individual to, to be a part of the conversation. Life transitions are something that, I mean, they happen for everybody. Some people are under the assumption that, you know, we decide early in life what our career is going to be, and then we follow these steps and that happens. And I was under that impression for a long time too, but then different things happened in life and different opportunities presented themselves. And I took a few risks in, in following what really felt resonant and, um, it was almost a physical sense of, I need to do this next. I didn't anticipate it, but now in life, this, this feels like the, really the right decision. One of my favorite writers has a, a quote that I love, and she says, we get to reinvent ourselves endlessly. And um, she has a great TED talk about this, about being a misfit and the joys of not following the conventional path and the path that's prescribed by others for us and our lives. I think with maturity comes this ability to see, to really see who you are if you do enough self-exploration and to really know what's right for you and to be able to block out the voices that would dissent and say that's not a practical choice or you shouldn't do that. Getting curious about the inner critic is important. So taking a moment to go inside and acknowledge that that inner critic is there, to listen to what it has to say, to thank it for being there, almost personify it as though it's, it's something inside that usually inner critic is there to protect us and, and keep us safe. So that's important, as you say, it's, it's very, very important to attune to, to that sense of safety because it's there for a reason. It can get overprotective at times. So if that seems to be the case, there might be other parts of us that can dialogue with that. Maybe the inner child that has a lot of playfulness and creativity and energy can talk to the inner critic and say, you know, we're actually okay. We have different qualities that we can apply to this situation. And the deeper inner sense of self too can get curious. So what are these different parts of myself talking about and why are they here and what purpose are they serving and uh, how can we all work together, the critic, the child, the self and, and whoever else might show up.